Welcome. Welcome, dear viewers and listeners. And we thank God for giving us this opportunity today also to, uh, to come before the Lord and also have this opportunity to continue in our series of testimonies and uh, healing. And uh, we have been going through the life experiences with uh, diabetes and uh, uh, we also look at autoimmune diseases. We look at high blood pressure, skin diseases yesterday. And, uh, and uh, today <clears throat> we are going to look at women diseases. And uh, I believe that uh, we're going to be blessed by this presentation. Uh, let us pray as we get into it. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time that you have given us as we go through the, the divine plan for healing the body. We pray that you may restore us fully in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so um, I want to say that the Lord has been good and uh, in this series, uh, regardless of the time you will be watching, we are here to help you know about your health and also to help you understand the principal laws of health that help to keep your body in shape, in health, and in life. And God has given us water, God has given us the strength to do exercise and to have proper diet that is vegan or plant-based diet, balanced plant-based diet, and being in the sun so that you are, uh, the vitamin D can activate the assimilation of calcium into the bones and into the cells. Having that which is right for you and eliminating that which is not proper for your body and trusting in divine power, helping others, living a pure life, trusting in God are the laws of life that God has given that may help us to live a healthy life. Now, today I want to go into this uh, study about women diseases. We live in a world that almost 60% uh, of the women are suffering from various diseases. And these diseases uh, ranges from hangovers to mood swings to um, uh, picos or uh, polycystic uh, ovarian syndrome and uh, fibroids, ovarian cyst, breast cancer. And all these are stemming from change in the hormones. So when we are going through this, uh, this, this study, we must understand, we must understand really how the body works. And uh, more so, the diseases that I have just mentioned, for those who are joining, we just introducing uh, the women related diseases. And we find that 80% of them are as a result of hormonal imbalance. We must know that uh, there are about five hormones that affect the, the woman life. And that is, we have. Uh, and these hormones, most, mostly about four of them controls the, uh, four of them controls the, uh, four of them controls the, the, uh, the menstrual cycle. And that is follicle stimulating hormone. That is the first hormone that uh, always is produced when there is, uh, when, 
a woman goes for a, a period, the first day of the cycle is the day that she goes, she goes for the period. And then the follicle stimulating hormone will begin to raise and to rise until the middle of the cycle. The follicle stimulating hormones stimulate the follicles, uh, the ovarian follicles to produce sacs that are going to store the ovum. And then uh, after, after making sure that the, the, the follicles have, 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 have the sacs that contain the ovum, in beginning from day 10 to day 14, the level of the luteinizing hormone will begin to increase so that when the, when the woman reaches the middle of her cycle, day 14 or day 15, the luteinizing hormone is going to be released in larger scale so that the follicles can rupture to release one egg. And this egg is ready for fertilization. Now, when, when that process has taken place, the process called ovulation, we get that the luteinizing hormone in the next three days will, really, will reduce. The follicle stimulating hormone also will reduce, but the level of progesterone increases. Immediately the ovulation takes place. And when it has not met the male gamete, it will, be, it will dissolve within 24, uh, 24 hours. But if there is fertilization, the progesterone will be continuing to maintain the pregnancy. And the estrogen levels will be a little bit lower than the, uh, than the progesterone. But should fertilization not take place, the level of progesterone will continue to increase until now when it is remaining about two days to, uh, um, to uh, for, for the, uterine walls to, to be slashed off. But during the day after ovulation, the progesterone and estrogen levels are released, but the estrogen levels are a little bit lower, uh, just a little bit uh, than the progesterone. The, 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 the estrogen helps to strengthen and to help develop the uterine walls. And once the process when fertilization did not take place after 30 days, the woman will go for the ovulation, uh, for, for the periods or menst menstrual flow. Now, should the, uh, should the, um, the fertilization takes place, there is another hormone that is released and that is prolactin. The prolactin hormone helps alongside the progesterone to maintain the pregnancy. So, uh, those are the hormones that are continually produced by women. The last hormone that is produced, and that this is about the fertility, is AMH. The AMH hormone measures the level of the, of the fertile uh, hormones that can help the woman to conceive. Now, so when we are going to the women diseases, we must understand these hormones and how they interplay in the system. We know that progesterone is a happy hormone and estrogen, these are the key players in the women's health. And most of the times when we have hormonal imbalance in that either the prolactin can be very high to affect the fertility or the estrogen will be so high to, uh, to actually dominate the system so that other hormones that interplay in the process to normalize the normal working, the reproductive health of a woman is tampered with. So most of the times the estrogen is the, is the culprit. So uh, when the estrogen levels are so high, you get that the woman will have various diseases that we want to handle here. So we must understand that interplay before we go into this, uh, uh, into this uh, study today. So I'm going to share my slide so that we can learn and study together. Well, um,
We are looking at uh, fibroids, tumors, breast cancer, ovarian cyst, PCOS uh, program. This is a general program that uh, we look in order to, uh, to help us, give us uh, a, a total, a totality of understanding of the women health. Um, we know that number one for us to go through these diseases, and this is a general step that we apply for all diseases. Number one is to make sure that the elimination channels are open, and that is the skin, the liver, the colon, the kidney, the lungs, the lymphatic system, the blood, and the brain. So through use of water hydrotherapy methods and use of uh, uh, juices and uh, vegetables, uh, vegetable juices or, or fruit juices that helps to cleanse the system and help us to make sure that these organs detoxify well, need to be followed uh, very well. Now, exercise, drinking of plenty of water, being in the sun and cleaning your colon and kidney and lungs, lymphatic system, all this will help you to help the system to remove any cyst, any toxin, because for a cyst to form and for any fibroid to form, you know, fibroids are as a result of the um, inability of blood to flow into the reproductive system. And uh, when they mix with the, with the, with, with the toxins, and that's amalgamation process between the toxins and the blood takes place. They, they destroy the adjacent cells within the, uh, within the ovaries or uh, within the fallopian tube uh, so that they can begin to develop an abnormal overgrowth of cells. So you have fibroids or you can have the ovarian cysts or it is, if it is in the breast, you have the breast cysts or breast tumors. So that toxin has to be eliminated properly through a thorough process of making sure that uh, every chemical is eliminated. Now, uh, step two is to do liver detox. And there are many things that we can use to do the liver detox. Because liver, we know, is the project manager. It helps to, uh, to actually control many of the processes in the system. And you know that our liver begins to be active between 2 a.m. and it will be active until 2 p.m. During that process, the deamination process, the detoxification process takes place and even uh, a lot of uh, a lot of factors that help with the uh, with the cleansing uh, procedures take place during that time so liver is a very important factor and you know that it even control most of the steroids and that is uh, uh, about the cholesterol when the steroids are imbalanced are high in the system you will have hormonal imbalance. Your adrenal glands, your pituitary glands will be affected. So the liver is in control, uh, is meant to control that. So what you do is juice five lemons followed by two tablespoons of olive oil in day one, day two, take it to 10 lemons followed by two tablespoons of olive oil, day for three, Juice 15 lemons followed by two tablespoons of olive oil. And day, day four, go to 20. Uh, go to 20 lemons and follow with two tablespoons of olive oil. And day six, go to 25. Day seven, go to 25 again. Day eight, reduce to 20. Day nine, reduce to 15. And day 10, reduce to five. Always follow with two tablespoons of olive oil and then do uh, take it two hours before breakfast. During that time, do hot and cold fermentation on the liver. 
And uh, another method is to use tamarind tea. You put the fruit in hot water, about four inch of the, of the, of the fruit of tamarind into water and then hot water. And then when it is cool, take it in and then follow with two tablespoons of olive oil. Tamarind is known to be a super fruit for the liver and even generally for the organs. Um, uh, there are many things that we can say about tamarind. So drink two hours before the first meal. So during that process, it is going to clean your, bowl, uh, your, your, your liver, as well as uh, if you take a lot of uh, lemon, your bowels will also be moving. Do a coffee enema, that is adding three tablespoons into a cup of, uh, of hot water, let it steep until cool, sieve, fill your enema bag with it, and then lubricate the tip, and then insert into the rectum. The person should be able to hold it for at least 30 minutes if, that if they can, don't force someone to retain it at that, at that level. If they cannot, uh, as much as they, if even if it's 10 minutes or 15 minutes, but the longer they can, the longer they, uh, the, 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 the longer the cleansing will take place. Now, what you do is with the coffee enema is that uh, uh, sometimes you can take the three tablespoon and put in and those two, uh, 250 minutes of water and let it boil for about 10 minutes. And then you sieve and use. Now, you also need to do a colon cleanse. And in the colon cleanse, you can do a high enema with the black stop molasses. Uh, black stop molasses is a feeding enema. Just add about a glass of black stop molasses in one liter of water, warm water, and then fill your enema bag insert through the rectum and retain as much as you can. You can do garlic enema, catnip or borage or senna tea enema. That will help to clean your bowels. And you can also choose to do a no enema cleanse where you don't use a, a, a liquid through the rectal system. You use four tablespoons psyllium husk, six tablespoons senna powder, four tablespoons of moringa powder, four tablespoons of aloe powder, and four tablespoons of bentonite clay, four tablespoons of activated charcoal, three tablespoons of fennel seed powder. You can also use four tablespoons of ginger root powder or four tablespoons of comfrey root powder. And then mix them all together and then after mixing, you're going to use a tablespoon of that compound mixture in a glass of warm water. You stir immediately, you take it in three times a day for the first three days, um, uh, for the first six days, sorry, and then you relax uh, the next, the following week, and then the, the, the other week you, you come back again with the procedure. And note that immediately you have done the colon enema, you need uh, the colon cleanse or the high enema, you need to feed your bowels with a good, uh, uh, the good um, uh, biota, that is the good bacteria. You can choose to take a cabbage and cabbage, flaxseed and, and, uh, and garlic uh, juice, or you can choose to, to buy other uh, probiotics like Lepicol or Mega-8 or um, Acidophilus lactobacter. You need to fill your system with about 30 billion of this bacteria that will help your body to, to regenerate well. And uh, if you fail to, to get all those probiotics, you can make uh, one of these probiotics using brown rice. Just take your brown rice, about one cup, soak it in water overnight. Uh, after washing it, 
uh, for one cup, add two cups, and then add one cup of black stock molasses and let it stay overnight. The following day, you sieve it and you drink it. It will really help to restore some bacteria. Uh, but if you need, this will not work very quickly. If you need some quicker one, you need to go for the prebiotics that you buy in the health stores. You need to do salt glow. Salt glow help the uh, help to remove the skin, uh, the, 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 the scars on the skin and open up the pores uh, so that elimination of the waste can take place. So what you do, you just rub the salt, a malign salt or rock salt or Epsom salt on your skin or even sand. If you don't have the salt, use sand. And when you are rubbing, make sure you are rubbing towards the heart. Rub it towards the heart. Don't rub it going away from the heart. Rub it towards the heart, your hands towards the heart. And then on the chest, you have to rub uh, in a circular motion. If you go on your legs, you need to rub coming up, beginning from the left, and then you end from the right. That is the process. And then uh, you can use the, the, the warm water when you're doing this and then the person should be able to relax. You can do salt glow thrice in a week to help with the blood circulation. That is going to trigger your lymphatic system as to remove a lot of waste and also to break down any, uh, to help with the breakdown of the cyst uh, or tumor or any uh, blockage that is within the, the system. Another thing is to use the three oil massage. Now the three oil massage help to stimulate the blood and also stimulate the nervous system. This is a general procedure and mostly we do these procedures when maybe someone is in a sanitarium or in a treatment room. Uh, we need to be very busy and very thorough because it is not going to play with you. When you meet people with breast cancer, people with fibroids that are very painful, you need to be thorough. Uh, so you can choose what you are able to do conveniently at your place. And sometimes you don't need most of this, uh, sometimes just with the faith you have, just simple procedure and you are recovering. The first day, massage the body using clove oil. And then, uh, Massage or uh, clove oil will actually improve the circulation of the blood. Do a deep tissue massage the whole body. The second day, you want to do it using olive oil. Olive oil will feed the cells, and uh, it will relax the this uh, your 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 blood vessels. It break down those cholesterol plaques in the vessels, and uh, you make sure that you do this after two hours after the meal, two to three hours after the meal, uh, so that the body may be able to, to relax. Uh, don't do a massage or salt glow or hot foot bath when someone has just eaten. Wait for at least two to three hours before doing it. The third day, use castor oil. Castor oil is a good absorbent and a drawer, it will draw the toxins out of the body. After three days, your patient will be feeling very light and glowing. It is always good for a person to rest after massage. And mostly these people will go for a sleep. So massage is very important technique in boosting circulation. Remember in Healthful Living, page 30 says, perfect health depends upon perfect circulation. And that is why God gave us exercise, God gave us water, God gave us sunlight to help us improve circulation of blood in the body. And uh, uh, above all, he gave us the plant-based diet that helped the blood to be uh, thin enough to flow through the vessels and to remove the waste. Now you need also to rely on water and exercise. So, in your program, be very thorough with the water treatment. It can be hot for hot foot bath. It can be uh, cold mitten friction or wet sheet pack. All these procedures, you need to 
in include them in your in, in your regimen to make sure that the body can be able to eliminate. You know that thousands have died for want of pure water and pure hair who might have lived. That is why the circulation of blood has to be maintained. Another thing you have to look for is juicing and nutrition. Give lots of dark green leafy uh, vegetables or green juices. This will be doing a blood uh, transfusion because you know they, we have the green coloring matter, which is chlorophyll in the plant. It is a precursor of the hormones of the red coloring matter in the plant. The only difference that in plant we have the magnesium ion in the middle at the center of molecule. Uh, but in the blood, in the red blood or the hemoglobin, uh, in, in the red blood cells, the hemoglobin per se, it has the ion uh, in the middle as the main uh, molecule or ion. Uh, so we need to give a lot of these juices. The juices will help to rebuild your system. And more so, I prefer, recently I'm doing a research on the use of the local veg vegetable, indigenous vegetables. And I find that they are so powerful in, uh, in doing great changes in our bodies, like uh, uh, vegetables like jute mallow, amaranth, spider plant, um, cowpeas, slender leaf, I don't know if you know the slender, slender leaf, it is a bitter, bitter vegetables like dandelion. If you can get all these and juice them and give the person to drink, or even sometimes do an enema with them, the person tend to regenerate and rejuvenate very fast. In our sanitoriums and treatment rooms, or even our homes, we need uh, to grow most of these uh, indigenous local vegetables to help with the regeneration process. It is so quick, I tell you, very quick that the people who go through this local indigenous vegetable are able to recover from cancer or from fibroid or from any disease very fast because they are very potent and they have nutrients that feed the cells. They have high calcium, high potassium, and you know that if you have potassium, a cyst cannot grow in your body where there is potassium. That is why in cancer treatment, uh, herbs that are high in copper and potassium help us to fight and break down the tumor. So you need to study and understand the herbs that are high in copper and are high in potassium. Yes, yeah, so inducing a nutrition, we must follow this procedure to help the system to, uh, to generate well. So number one, we can have the red juice. The red juice is made of the carrots, red bulb onion, beetroots, cloves of garlic, and red cabbage, tomatoes. And you can add there even uh, turmeric, yes. And then ginger, and avocado seed powder, just add a teaspoon of each. And then you add this into a glass bottle after juicing and you drink that. It is always good to prepare a copper's amount that is good for that time. If it is a glass, make a glass for that time and let the patient take it immediately after making it. Because if we tend to store it for a long time, it, it reduces in potency it oxidizes, which is good to take them almost immediately. If we have our sanitariums, if you have patients, they should just be lining with a cup or with a, with a, with a glass immediately after the exercise and drinking water. And you come to the, uh, to the juicing point, you've juiced your grasses there, it can be wheatgrass, alfalfa, or celery, parsley, and stinging nettle, jute mallow, uh, malabar spinach, dandelion, slender leaf uh, uh, vegetables, can be cabbage, kales, mustard greens. And then the patient just sip it slowly and 
go to rest. Now that is so helpful with, the, uh, with, with these diseases. I'm longing for that time that our institutions will be having such experiences. Now you, the green juice is made from spinach, celery, pumpkin leaves, malaba spinach, amaranth, blackjack leaves, cowpeas, African spinach, and this will help you to build the blood very fast. When you meet someone who is in a critical condition, don't run into herbs, no. First, the first three days you need to feed the system with the food and the supplements that are needed. You have to give about 50 grams of kale or some spirulina in your juices or vitamin C in your juices. Uh, or even calcium, any supplement you have there, vitamin E and uh, beta carotene or a tripe, uh, there's tryptophan, you can add them into your juices and take them. And then the patient should be able to relax at least one and a half hours before taking any heavy meal. So if the patient is very weak or someone is feeling very weak, there are two ways. The first way is revitalizing using a, a revitalizing drink. And this one, you make a cup of coconut milk and some sprouts. You can sprout green grams, lentils. You can sprout alfalfa seeds. You can sprout broccoli or cauliflower. And then you put the two tablespoons of chia seeds, half a glass of grape juice, and half a glass of black strap molasses. And then you blend all this together and give the patient about a half a glass after every three hours to revitalize the system. Another way you can revitalize the system is to use a cup of pineapple juice and you add a cup or half a glass of grape juice and you add a teaspoon of, uh, of um, a teaspoon of chia seeds, blend them together. You can add a banana there, ripe banana, very ripe banana, a cup of ripe banana, blend them together and give the person to drink. That is very revitalizing. It gives the patient a strength, a strength very fast. You can also make potassium drop, uh, potassium broth. And hundreds of women have wondered why they have tumors and cysts in their bodies. The cause is potassium deficiency. Um, when a patient takes plenty of potassium foods, not supplement, you can remove the cause of the cyst and tumors. The body needs to have a lot of uh, a balanced amount of potassium. And that's why God gave different varieties of fruits. Have you ever wondered that, wondered that uh, if uh, you have banana, we have over 10 varieties of bananas. Why did God put it that way? Because he wants to uh, to them to supplement one another or complement one another so that you meet the daily target. So, the varieties help us to build the potassium, the, 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 the sodium, um, the calcium, the magnesium into the system and the sulfur in a well-balanced way. So potassium broth is given to patients that are weak or patients that you don't want them to take uh, uh, other foods like carbohydrates and uh, proteins or even leg juice. So, you make a potassium broth in case they are very weak, you give them this. And this one you make with white potatoes, a cup of white potato, or that is Irish potato, a, uh, and uh, about uh, a handful of stinging nettle, a cup of turnips, and a half a cup of onions, a bunch of celery, a cup of carrots, and the herbs for taste. Maybe you can put some garlic there, about a bulb of garlic and oregano, or um, you can put uh, some peppermint uh, leaves and then let it cook 
for about 30 minutes. You will add about two cups of water there and allow it to cook for 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, blend it up and give the patient to take a cup after every four hours. This will be very rich in potassium. You need to take care of the kidney. If the patient is having a kidney problem that is as a result of potassium, uh, high risk, high levels of potassium, you won't use this at that time, but you will use the previous one, this one that we had made in rebuilding the system. So you need to be checking on the kidneys and checking on uh, uh, mostly the kidney, how the kidney, how the kidney is, uh, is reacting to this treatment. If you see the legs are swelling, you see the face is swelling, um, that may, may, be as a, uh, may be a problem with the circulation of blood uh, to the extremities and also the kidneys are being overweight. So you need to know what to remove from the program. Another herbal tea that you can use at this moment to clean the, resp uh, the reproductive system is uh, making equal parts of corn silk, horseweed, wormwood, or artemisia, or crumpack, uh, crumbuck, chamomile, coach grass, yellow dog, ginger, and garlic, and wild yam. Uh, uh, you boil this in two liters of water until it is reduced into a half the original volume. Uh, and then add a glass of vegetable glycerin or two cups of black stop molasses. Let it simmer for five minutes and then strain and drink a half a glass three times a day. The goodness with this is that you can make it in large quantity by just uh, uh, playing around with the ratio and you can store this even for six months if you have the vegetable glycerin and uh, blackstrap molasses. And the blackstrap molasses also help with the extraction of some medicinal properties. Vegetable glycerin, the same. It helps with the, uh, with the extraction of all this. You can also add um, DMSO. Uh, DMSO, I said, for one part of the hub particles or substance, you put two parts of the DMSO to help the body to, uh, to help extract those medicinal properties and also do a herbal chemo into the system. So we have single herbs that are very helpful with the women diseases. If you see this white oak tree, this is Kigelia africana or sausage fruit. Some people call it white oak. We use the fruits, we use the bark to control almost all women problems from picos to ovarian cysts to fibroids, blocked fallopian tubes and um, infertility problems. Uh, it really helps women with balancing the hormones. So you take the fruit, you can take the dried ones or when they are very fresh, uh, they are very good. The fruits are very good in boosting the iron content as well as balancing the hormones in the system. So you can use both the bark and the, on the, and the fruits. You decoct them overnight. For instance, if you take a thumbs, uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, um, thumb size of the bark crushed, and then a cup of the fruit in about four liters of water, let it, uh, let it simmer for about uh, 30 minutes and then sieve and drink two cups, no, three cups a day should be able to balance your hormone. With women problems, it is very easy. After 30 days, the problem should, be not, should not be there. So if you choose to go through this program, I can choose to begin with the hub, the first three days, I begin with the hub that is trying to collect any toxin, any chemical, any, 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 any infection within the reproductive system, collecting it together within the uterine walls. And that one I can use a plant like austin or horseweed or acacia bark or I can use cranberry 
juice. You just give cranberry juice or pineapple juice the first three days, about one liter a day. Um, if it is those herbs like acacia bark and host oseweed, you take uh, three cups a day for the first three days. It will be able to collect it within a central point in the reproductive system. And then you, you, you begin now with taking the Kigelia africana back and the, and the fruit or the fruit alone for about 27 days. And the last 27 days, you go back to the first one that we had used, acacia bark or acacia bark plantain or, uh, or oseweed. oseweed. And then at, when the person will be going for the menses, it will flush out the toxins and uh, all the uh, all the debris that was in the in, in, in the in the ovary or in the uterus, and then the person will be healed. So another herb is uh, Carissa edulis. I don't know whether you know this. Carissa edulis is very important herb singly. And this one we use for, for women who cannot, uh, there are women who cannot. So, Okay, so as I continue, uh, let me just share the screen as we continue. Carissa edulis, uh, the, the, the root bugs are very important. Um, we use it for hormonal imbalance in women. You just take the, the roots. We also use it to maintain pregnancy. If you don't, if you don't want any miscarriage, you want the child to, uh, to, to balance the hormones within the uterine wall so that the, the child can be fed well during pregnancy. Use the Carissa edulis roots. And it actually makes the, the woman to go, uh, actually during the, the expectancy period to have, uh, will not have a lot of layers of, of the of the body changes, temperatures, it will always be controlling it. I use it alongside the, use it alongside, alongside this herb that is called, um, uh, that is called red raspberry, red raspberry leaves to help control hormonal imbalance. And we use it generally for all the uh, women problems. And then we have this adenia, uh, you know all this, uh, when it is ripe, it is always yellow in color. Some people call it snake plant or lady slipper. The roots are known to help uh, hormonal imbalance and muscle balancing the prolactin and uh, progesterone levels and estrogen uh, during the menses and during menstrual periods. It is so helpful in even helping with women who cannot give birth. Now, if you give it to some woman who is having a problem with the fibroids um, and take the tea of the roots for about 30 days, it should be able to restore the system. And then we have this pamsis and so palmetto. This is so palmetto. The palm tree is a bit, uh, is a bit tall, a little bit. So palmetto is a, it's also very tall, but uh, all of them you can use palm seeds when they are yellow and ripe. You can make, you can blend them up and take it through. You know, it helps also even women and men alike. It controls the hormones and help with fibroid greatly. Now you can do herbal chemo for fighting hebro, fibroids and, and cyst. And we use three parts of sausage fruit in the Luo language, they call it Yago, which is Kigelia Africana. Some people call it white hawk or, or um, sausage fruit tree. And three parts of albizia, 
six parts of Tylosema and one part of Acacia bark. I can also add three parts of plantain, two parts of uh, plantain herb, yes, uh, three parts of comfrey root, acacia leaf, uh, stinging nettle, dandelion roots, yellow dock, and pork root, and uh, six parts of cumin powder. You know, cumin has been used to control the um, uh, very aggressive uh, breast cancers. Cumin powder is very helpful. And couch grass, couch grass helps to clean the reproductive system and rosemary. Now, I had an experience with a woman who could not, uh, was having fibroids and uh, she had had fibroids for seven years and she had tried most of the remedial agencies uh, using the conventional methods, but it could not work. So she approached me and told me I need help. And so I went and prayed about it. We talked about the natural loss of health. And then I gave her a formula made of uh, the sausage fruit, albizia, tylosema, acacia bark, acacia leaf, plantain herb, and um, um, yellow dock, stinging nettle, and, uh, and uh, what else, the mother what, which the one we call lion's ear. I made a, a, a very concentrated formula. And then when I gave her, after three months, the woman calls me and tells me, uh, weekly, I, I am very happy today. And I ask her, why are you so happy? When I went for, uh, uh, to the hospital for a test, I was expecting that I had conceived and truly I had conceived. And no, this woman had been having fibroid for those days, for those seven years, but she had been looking for a child. So we just said, praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for what has worked. So these remedies really work if we trust in Lord and follow the other laws of health. And alongside uh, these herbs, the results are very great. So simmer all these herbs until the quantity of water is reduced to a half. If you had four liters, they have to be two liters. And then add eight cups of molasses, simmer for eight minutes. And then after that, you will give a half a glass three times a day. This will be very potent and shrinks away any tumor or cyst. And sometimes you may not have all the herbs mentioned, you will use the ones you can find easily. If you're developing a formula, use at least three. Hormonal tea. Um, the hormonal tea that uh, we can recommend is dandelion, that is three tablespoons, wild yam, albizia, tylosema, chestberry, badok, igelia africana. You boil all those together, add eight cups of uh, blackstrap molasses, boil for eight minutes and then take a half a cup after every three minutes. You can also take supplements like selenium and pecan nuts has highest sources of, of selenium. They are also there in onions, in uh, macadamia nuts, they are so high also. And you take spirulina, the buchu, the hubausi, the couch grass, the hostel, the stinging nettle, uh, vitamin C, uh, calcium and magnesium to help strengthen the bones uh, because when women are having hormonal imbalance, always the bone density goes low. And so you need to be on, uh, uh, you need to boost your calcium. So you need to take about uh, 800 grams of potassium or feed on uh, highly on dark green leafy vegetable juices. Yes. And, uh, for you to break down the tumor in the uterine walls or cysts in the ovaries, you do something that is called uh, a, a doche. And that is an enema through the bath canal. So you can use the previous herbs that I'd mentioned. You make a decoction and use a syringe about, uh, about 10 mils, and then let the, the woman, and this should be done with um, uh, with a with a, a fellow a, 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 a female physician, 
Now, it is very good that it is always advisable that women handle women, men should handle men. And we need to have ladies and women who are qualified in this field of women diseases to help educate women on their related diseases. It is because of the lack that we take this opportunity to educate us and to help us find a solution for the problems that women and women alike have these days. Now, after making the strong concentrate of these herbs that I've written here, the goodness, they are very easy to find in, in Kenya. So um, you cannot say that you cannot get at least four of these. And then after making a strong decoction, inject it through the bath canal in a slanting position. It means the head should be lower in a lower region, the legs, uh, the, 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 the um, the anterior, the, the, not the anterior, but the, 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 the lower region of the, of the limb should be up so that there will be that uh, trickling down of this herbal component into the birth canal, into the uterus, into the ovary, and then it cleans everything for about, five, uh, for about 30 minutes, and then the person should, uh, uh, should uh, come back to the, to the right position. Now, this helps to break down the cyst and the tumor. So uh, this is a way of even cleaning the, uh, you know, cleaning the reproductive system. Yeah, so this is so helpful. You can do a bolus, a cervical cyst, fibroids, and vaginitis uh, using uh, the slant board method that I've just said. Or, or making a bolus, mix equal parts of clove powder, clove powder, slippery M, yellow dog root, comfrey root, marshmallow, chickweed, golden seed, and ginger root. And melt coconut butter and add about uh, uh, equal parts of um, equal parts of bee wax. If you take, for instance, about half a glass of coconut butter, take a, also half a glass of, of uh, butter, of that butter, uh, not butter, bee wax, and then melt them, mix those herbs, let it, let it heat for about five minutes, and then let it cool. You will be able to mold it. When it is cool, it is able to mold in any shape you want. It may be as a pessary or a suppository or as a bolus and then insert it through the bath canal. And then let it stay there for about three days. It will melt and release all the medicinal properties into the uh, bath canal. And then it is able to break down any cysts, any fibroids, or any inflammation between the, within the bath canal. This is so helpful in, uh, in treating the women diseases. You can also make simple hormonal balance tea for women, and that is two parts of turmeric, two tablespoons passion flour, two tablespoons fenugreek powder, and two tablespoons of cumin powder. And you put them in hot water, drink three cups a day for someone with hormonal imbalance. It should be able to help you after a very short time. Note that during this time, you should be doing exercise, drinking a lot of water, being in the sun, um, being moderate in your food, take the right food, vegetarian diet, lots of vegetables and fruits, trusting in divine power and being in a, a good environment where there is fresh air. You can also add three tablespoons Eastern lily or cryosine or Estrogen. Don't worry if you don't have these supplements. Just use what you have, and use them faithfully. Black cohosh, moringa, zinc nettle, soy, Higelia africana, tylosema, wild yam. You can mix all these together in a glass of water. Make a tea. Drink two times a day until you find relief for any 
मेंस्ट्रुअल क्रांत पेनफुल मेंस्ट्रुअल क्रांत सबिकल कंसर फिब्रोइड और बैक पेन्स और पोस्ट मेनो पोसोल सिंड्रोम ऑल दोस कैन बी हेल्प विद दिस टी you can apply progestion clay cream on your body when you are using when a woman want to get health healthy even a man you need to balance your hormones when take care of the lotions the perfumes that you apply in your body and uh, for most of the times we are forced to apply these creams lotions perfumes because we don't have enough water in our system or another time and sometimes we are having a problem with the uh, with the farts in the in the body there's no balanced farts and phosphorus calcium and silica levels are very low so you need to boost it by taking a lot of flax seed chia seeds coconut milk or uh, or 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 um, cashew nuts macadamia this nuts help our skin to glow drinking a lot of water exercising removing a lot of waste help our body our skin to retain its health and um, to make a progesterone cream have vegetable fat one cup or half a cup sorry then beeswax half a cup shea butter or coconut butter half a cup lemon grass oil a hundred uh 10 mils and then wild yam powder one cup melt the vegetable fat and beeswax over low heat stir in the shea butter or coconut oil add the lemon grass oil essential oil it can be lavender it can be rose uh rose oil and then stirring constantly add wild yam and then stir again the mixture until it becomes cold you need the first process before adding the wild yam should be on heat and then after 5 minutes i think so you will remove it and then let it cool put it in a glass jar and then you um and then after that you will have to uh you love now to to store it that is all about uh, women diseases and uh, there are some experience of a woman who was having fibroids for about 3 years and when uh, she approached uh, i was uh, not having all those half that i've just described then that's i told her just go and use uh, go and use um go and use um, clove oil so she went and did clove oil dutch that is taking about 3 mils of clove oil in a syringe and then inserting through the uh, through the birth canal and uh, uh, this woman was able to be helped there was also someone who was having a problem with the discharges on the birth canal and uh, i used clove oil just clove oil alone and was able to to help and to streamline the body cloves is very good as uh, taking the buds or even uh, or taking the bud tea the bud tea you just take like two uh, two tablespoons of the the powder and put in water and then drink what i do here where i live is i make a clove tea and this is how i make it you know cloves is very concentrated with the alkaloids and that if you just boil it once and you throw them away you have low you thrown a lot of them so what i do i just decoct them like if i put half a glass of clove buds in maybe a glass jar i had two cups of water let it just rest there the following day i'll just take a cup of mine to drink and then i had another cup it can stay even for a week it doesn't go bad but if when it gets to the system it is able to clear to clean the system and it, 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 there are some problems that uh you may be having that cloves can just help it is just a general help for cleaning the body uh 
and making sure it's, uh, it also dissolves any tumor, any cyst within the system. So may God bless us. I would love to play, uh, to pray to, to end. Father in heaven, thank you for all this knowledge. May you give us uh, skills and um, knowledge in these lines that we may be able to help one another. And this night, in any person who is listening, whatever place, place he is or she is, let your blessings be upon him or her. This humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.